Welcome back, aspiring entrepreneurs. In this video, I'm going to share with you nine different habits that is keeping you poor and how I turn them into opportunities for financial growth. First of all, paying yourself last. You have probably heard the saying, pay yourself first. But what does it really truly mean? Traditionally, people tend to pay their bills and expenses right off the bat and save whatever little might be left. This approach often leaves saving as an afterthought, leading to minimal or no savings at all. So for example, when I received my paycheck last month, instead of immediately paying off my bills or going for a shopping spree, I transferred 10% into my savings account immediately. This small action assured that my future needs were prioritized over immediate ones. So according to a survey by Bankery, only 28% of Americans have a six-month emergency fund. This statistic underscores the importance of the pay yourself first philosophy in building a solid financial foundation. So I recommend you that starting from today, automate your finances to save at least 10% of every paycheck. Treat it like a non-negotiable expense, just like rent or utilities. So remember, paying yourself first isn't about depriving yourself. It's about ensuring your future financial stability and peace of mind. So second of all, lacking a financial buffer. So life is full of surprises, some of which can be extremely costly. Without a financial buffer, these surprises can lead to debt or financial distress. Experts recommend having at least six months worth of expenses saved up. So when my car broke down unexpectedly last month, my financial buffer actually helped me to cover the bare costs without disrupting my monthly budget or saving plans. A report by the Federal Reserve revealed that 40% of Americans wouldn't be able to cover $400 emergency expense without borrowing money or selling something. So that's horrible. So I strongly recommend that after you pay yourself, channel additional savings into your emergency fund until you reach the threshold of six months of expenses. Conclusion, a robust financial buffer is your first line of defense against life's unpredictability. Start building yours today. So the third one is not knowing income and expenses properly. Do you know where every dollar of your income goes to? Tracking your income and expenses is the cornerstone of sound financial planning. It provides clarity and control, enabling you to make informed decision. So for example, by using a budgeting app, I realized I was spending 20% of my income on non-essential stuff. These insights helped me to redirect that spending towards my saving goals. A survey by US Bank found that only 41% of Americans use a budget app to manage their finances, highlighting a significant gap in basic financial management. So I strongly recommend that you start tracking your income and expenses. Use tools or apps that fit into your lifestyle and review your budget regularly to adjust as needed. I will include the apps that I use in the description below. So in conclusion, understand your money flow is empowering, it's extremely powerful. It is the first step towards making your money work for you, not against you. So this month is actually Chinese New Year, so I've been spending a lot of money to buy new clothes. So drop a comment down below and share with me how much you have spent and what you have spent on this month. Fourth habit, underestimating the cost of entertainment. It's easy to overlook small entertainment expenses, but they can quickly accumulate. Subscription services, Netflix, Disney+, Plus, etc. Events might seem harmless, but when you put them together, it can significantly impact your savings and financial goals. So for example, I used to subscribe to multiple streaming services and frequently attend concerts. Just recently, I attended Coldplay, which is awesome. Once I tracked these expenses down, I was shocked to see that they totaled over $400 per month. So money that I could just save or just invest so according to a research, the average American spends about $2,912 on entertainment annually. So that's a sizable chunk of money that could potentially be directed towards financial goals. So I strongly recommend you to start evaluating your entertainment spending and consider cutting back on non-essential subscription or outings. 
instead find cost effective or free alternative that still bring you joy. So in conclusion, entertainment should be a part of your life, but not at the cost of your financial well-being. Be mindful of spending on leisure as it can lead to substantial savings over time. Fifth habit, not maximizing income. So building wealth isn't just about saving money. It's also about increasing your income stream. Relying solely on a primary income source might limit your financial growth. So exploring investments, side hustles, or career advancements can significantly boost your financial health. So I started freelancing on weekends, which not only honed my skill, but also added a substantial amount to my monthly income. So this extra cost flow accelerated my savings and investment plan. So a report by Zapier found that 34% of Americans have a side hustle and 61% of those with a side hustle started it to earn more disposable income. So I strongly recommend you to start evaluating your skills, your interests, to identify potential side hustles or investment opportunity. Strongly recommend you to consider subscribing to me because not only will I teach you how to save money, I will teach you how to make money. I will teach you side hustles that you can start doing today to succeed in 2024. Also, I will teach you personal developments like what I'm doing right now. So if you want to succeed in 2024, consider subscribing. So in conclusion, diversify your income sources is not about earning more. It's about securing your financial futures and opening up to new opportunity for wealth creation. So for the sixth factor, waiting too long to invest. Many people hesitate to invest, waiting for the right time or accumulating a sufficient amount of savings. However, the real power of investing comes from compounding returns over time, making early and consistent investments crucial. So I used to keep my savings in a regular bank account, earning minimal interest. When I started investing in a diversified portfolio, my money began to grow exponentially due to compounding interest. Research shows that historically, the average stock market return has been around 10% per year. By not investing, you are potentially missing out on these returns and the power of compound interest. So I strongly recommend you to start investing as early as possible. Start today. Even if it is a small amount, consider low-cost index funds or seek professional advice to align your investments with your risk tolerance and financial growth. Investing is a marathon, not a sprint. The earlier you start, the more you can benefit from compounding returns, setting yourself up for a more secure future. So drop a comment below if you want to know what to invest in 2024. Seventh, inactive financial management. So empathy towards personal finances can be one of the biggest obstacles to wealth accumulation. Actively managing your finances, setting clear goals and making informed decisions are essential for financial growth. So for example, once I started setting specific financial growth and actively managing my budget, I noticed a significant improvement in my financial health. This proactive approach turned my vague aspirations into achievable targets. So a study found that people who have written a financial plan are more likely to feel financially stable and make more responsible spending decisions. I strongly recommend you to engage with your finances regularly. Set clear, measurable financial goals to review your progress frequently. Educate yourself about financial management and investment strategies to make informed decision. In conclusion, taking control of your financial journey is powerful. Active and informed financial management is the cornerstone of building and maintaining wealth. Eight, eating out frequently. So while dining out is convenient and enjoyable, it can become a significant expense, especially for those on a tight budget. Cooking at home is not only cost effective, but also a healthier alternative. So I used to eat out most days of the week, spending about $15 per meal. So once I started cooking at home, my food expenses cut by half, saving me hundreds of dollars every month. So according to a research, the average American household spends about 
$459 dining out annually. So I strongly recommend you to challenge yourself to learn how to cook more meals at home, start to plan out your meals, learn new recipes, and treat dining out as a special occasion rather than the norm. So in conclusion, eating at home is a simple lifestyle change that you can have a profound impact on your finances. So drop a comment down below and tell me how much you have spent on food this month. So the last habit I have for you guys is that debt. Not all debt is bad, but high interest debts, especially from credit cards, can be detrimental to your financial health. They can hinder your ability to save and invest, keeping you in a cycle of repayment. So I was once trapped in credit card debt, paying high interest that made it seem like the balance never decreased. By prioritizing this debt and cutting unnecessary expenses, I finally broke free. So according to a research done, the average credit card interest rate is about 16%, making it one of the most expensive forms of debt for consumers. So I strongly recommend you to start prioritizing paying off high interest debts. Consider strategies like debt snowball or debt avalanche methods and avoid taking on new high interest debts. So in conclusion, eliminating bad debts is crucial for financial freedom. It's the first step towards redirecting your hard-earned money from interest payments to well-paying opportunity. Drop a comment down below and let me know your current strategy that you're using to save money and which of the nine habits that you're interested in and you start implementing it today. And there you have it, nine financial habits that could be keeping you from achieving your wealth goals along with strategies to overcome them. Remember, small changes can lead to big results. So I will strongly recommend you to start implementing these recommendations today, at least one or two, and watch how your financial health transform in six months time. And this is all for today's video. Thank you all for staying to the end. Kindly like this video if you have learned anything from it and comment any questions you have. Have a nice day, Ali. See you next time.